Hello, welcome to Reality Vomit Podcast, the Extension of the Vomit Series of Podcast. As always, I'm here with Mac Taylor, and today we're here to talk about two episodes of Big Brother Canada 9, episodes 11 and 10. Uh, sorry I did not uh, post on time this week. That's I promise that's not a normal thing for me to fall so super behind schedule, but I had a lot of personal life stuff that needed to be attended to uh, with my family and things of that nature. Nothing like, you know, nothing bad, just things I needed to go do that I was not able to, uh, you know, be in the mix like I wanted to be. I had watched the episodes, I had taken notes on them, but I did not, I was not available to record the podcast and get it out uh, as super fast as I normally would. Uh, so, you know, again, not going to be an often thing this season. In fact, I hope that this is the only time that I have to really play catch up uh, here in Big Brother Canada 9, especially as we're about to go into Challenge All-Stars, and I'm going to try to be covering that as well. I, I, I got to get it together or leave it alone, right? <laughs> so here we go, Big Brother Canada 9, episode 10, let's roll with it. So we start out, Roe Ro, Ro is pissed about Keith's speech. Uh, because, again, he won't let it go. Uh, him him, and Kyle both are just like, yeah, we, we kept him safe this week. We kept, we kept him safe last week. And it's like, again, you weren't pushing to keep Keith safe ne- necessarily. You were just pushing to have Latoya go. Uh, and everyone has said that and you're still like you won't let it go you guys need to find another route you need to actually talk to Kiefer hang out with Kiefer get close to Kiefer you failed to do that you just assumed that by not evicting him that would be enough and that's not enough you need to do much much more if you're trying to flip him from the soil in which he is so loyal uh but Jed Jed on the other hand really pushing loyal to the soil because Jed and Ty really need Kiefer to be on their side in case he does win another HOH. Because, especially Ty, for as, like, comp beastie as I thought they would be, Ty had one shit yet. It's been, you know, Jed won that one veto that he was strong-armed out of using in the first place. So Jed and Ty have not really proven their worth, really, in an alliance where Kiefer has won an HOH and a veto. So it's, uh... You know, been been an odd uh, odd season for comps. Uh, but the boys are celebrating the move uh, for now. Uh, and, and Vic Vic thinks she's playing both sides. Like she thinks she's really working it. And while both sides are trying to use Vic, like they don't really care that. Like the only one that really cares about keeping Keith a lot is is Kiefer. Uh, she's really lucky he was HOH this week because, like I said, she probably would have been an easy person to put up for most people. And in most cases, just an easy person to g- get out. If, if there was no other option, to just like, oh, we'll just vote out Vic. Like, she's not well protected. Yes, she's spread out, but spread out as like an expendable person. Uh, and she goes with uh, Kyle and Roe as they uh, shit talk. Beth, because everyone really dislikes Beth except for Jed and Ty, who really like Beth. So it's it's a, it's a, it's a interesting tale tale of two sides, right? Uh, and T- Tara and Tina also they shit talk everyone about the which you know some of the things she is because on the feed she has a tendency to tendency to just rant and just be kind of annoying with how much she doesn't stop talking, but. A lot of the things she brings up in this segment are genuine things to be concerned about. So, you know, I can't really fault her for, for like, people putting, like, plates flat in the dishwasher and, like, putting it in, like, during the cycle and things like that. Like, yeah, that that's annoying. Like, I, I get it. Uh, as someone who uh, has children in the household... Uh, my nieces and nephews, I get it. Like, uh, you know, messy house can be annoying, especially when it, if it's like adults, right? But again, sometimes I, I feel like they didn't show both sides of Tara's ranting, which is a lot of it is just uh, unnecessary. 
Uh, and she, and I, but you know, hey, Tara said she, you know, we saw in her intro packet she nominated her son being on the toilet seat. So, you know, if she gets HOH, there could be very minute reasons someone could go on the block. Tara is a very emotional player, and Tina does not do a real good job of reeling her in. Like a Der- Derek, you know, when Cody would get heated, Derek would calm him down, reel him back in, keep everything calm. Tina, not so good at that. She just lets Tara go, and that's that's not great uh, when you're trying to play both sides. But again, if Tara's going to blow anyone's game up, it's going to be hers, and Tina can still go. But she, she needs to kind of rein Tara in because Tara can be a good tool to use if she just, you know, you know, it's, uh, opportunistically needs to be unleashed. Can't just always be un- unglued, right? Uh, and Ty is, like, worried about Austin. Like, him and Beth are just talking about how great it would be uh, to, to take out Austin. And I'm like, yeah, I, I think Austin's a good target. But Kyle and Roe are much more important right now. Now, next week, when they're split up, let's split up Austin and Bray. That makes total sense. But right now, Kyle and Roe are on the block. Let's take out Kyle or Roe. Let's not make more enemies. Like, if we take out Austin this week and leave Kyle and Roe together... They're going to put up Ty, Jed, Beth, or Kiefer. But they're probably going to take out Ty, Jed, or Beth. So it's it, it's a huge oversight on, on Ty and Jed's part, and Beth's, to think that this is the best move for them is to work. Like Jed and Ty cannot get it in their heads that they shouldn't work with Kyle and Rowe. It's too late to work with Kyle and Roe. They could have worked with Kyle and Roe if they tried this early. That'd be like the pretty boys trying to come together in mid-season. It does not work like that. You need to make these bonds early because you've already took a shot at them. Now you, you can't take that back. Uh, and Kyle and Roe want Vic as a replacement nom if uh, one of them wins veto. Because then they could try to get the house to go against Vic, and they could probably get the votes. Like, a lot of people don't care if Vic goes home. Especially, you know, Jed, Ty, and Beth are still pissed about LT going home. So, it's a lot easier sell than if someone like Austin goes on the block. It's a little harder sell in their minds. They don't think that Jed, Ty, and Beth would be so stupid as to target Austin over Kyler Rowe. Uh, and Austin and Kyle seem to be, like, developing a showmance here. Like, Austin is really, like, I know Jet on the feeds, like, Jed had flirted with her. She really wasn't having it. Uh, and uh, at first, she really wasn't having Kyle, but it seems like they have, like, come together over time. Uh, but it's it's there's, it's not like Jed tied Beth or they're just making out and stuff. Like, it, it, it's very innocent. Uh, but, you know... It, it could be very short lived with how this week is spanning out, right? So we pick player for the veto. Kyle, Roe, Beth, Jed, and Austin are playing veto. So Beth and Jed uh, should not use it. Austin should not use it. Uh, really, the only people that would use it 100% are Kyle and Roe. So not looking great for Kyle and Roe. But then Austin's like, yeah, I want to take Kyle off the block. I'm like, that leaves Brayden open to go up. Like, I know that you're flirting with Kyle, and, and, and that's great. But if Brayden truly is your number one ally, you don't want to leave him exposed. Because if you piss Keith off by taking off one of his nominees, and he's not going to put Vic up, so the only real option you leave him is Brayden. So, you know, I know they think they could convince him to put Vic up, but still, that's a gamble if you're Austin. If you're Kyle, by all means, this is great for you. Uh, so, Ro also talks to Jed about throwing the comp. And Jed actually entertains the idea. Not great. Not good that he's doing this. Should not do this. Should not... You know, it's too hard to play off that you didn't throw it. But I, for what, you know, spoiler alert, when we get to the comp, it doesn't look like he threw it. It looks like he's going for it. So it's hard, to, you know, he's just entertaining the idea, but really, you know, 
we should get a DR from him saying, like, absolutely not, shutting this down, but we don't really get that. Uh, and Roe then talks to Austin about throwing it, but it's clear she's trying to save Kyle. And Bray and Austin, they joke about their third person always dropping, like they're joking about like trying to get Vic out this week. Like, oh, everyone we bring into the dolls, either we get rid of them in the group, either, like we hate them or they go home. And it's like, that's not a great thing, guys. Like, there's only so many people we can bring into the dolls, and pretty soon a, a, a doll that's not them is going to go home, right? Uh, so Ro tries to get Vic back to work. Uh, Akeef acts like he wants them to win, but in all reality, he wants them to stay on the block. Uh, and, and Vic also tosses some thruple shade at the Vita. Like she kind of makes a joke about the thruple because, you know, Jed, Ty, and Beth is clear in the house that they're all together together all the time. So, but it's not like a hard shade. It's just, it, was, it was a friendly maneuverable joke it wasn't anything you know uh, nasty v v Vic is playful with a lot of the stuff that she says uh so it's a uh, mole in one veto competition it's basically like a giant table maze where you have to like pop you're dressed they're all dressed as uh gophers or moles or whatever and they've got to pop up and using only like blowing the, with their breath push these balls through a maze and in the end and they had to get like uh, it was like seven or eight balls something like that a uh, lot of ball related things this season in, in Big Brother Canada uh, so th this is not an easy comp to do clearly because you, you know, there's a lot of energy to be exerted and there's a strategy to be had. And Rohan is uh, the one to find the strategy. Jed's comp beasting early. Like, and he says, like, I just want to comp beast this out. And I'm like, why? That makes you so threatening. But again, I get it. Like, you know, if you dominate it, you dominate it. But he says an early lead. But Ro kind of goes around, finds that path that works the best, and then just like clockwork goes down that path. Or Jed's just trying to, wherever he can get it, get it. Ro has that, like, left, that far left path. That it's it's longer, but it's there's it's easier to get the ball through, right? And so he starts catching up because his is more consistent. Uh, and Roe ends up winning the power of veto, saves his ass this week. Uh, everyone else was pretty shit at the veto, especially Austin. Like we saw a lot of her like failing pretty hard at it. Uh, Kyle was pretty bad at it because he was kind of too tall for as low as the holes were so that kind of was a disadvantage for him uh and beth was just non-existent in this competition uh, and and roe has a great sound clip here he's like i just like to thank my parents for giving birth to this absolute champion because he won the veto and he's, he's trying to play like the cocky villain kind of thing but like i don't know it's a little endearing from roe because he's not really been in control so it's nice to see Ro uh, pick up a comp win here. Uh, so the oddballs push Vic to the wolves with Keith. Uh, and Canada saves Ro from slop, which, you know what? Uh, I'd also like to thank Ro's parents for giving birth to an absolute champion because <laughs> he's, he's two for two here. Uh, but no, uh, he was the obvious choice to save. He'd been on it for two weeks. He, it's time for him to eat some actual food. I'm glad he got it. But there's this weird thing. Where, like, Vic got weird with Rose's food. Like, he walked away to, like, I don't know, get, like, a napkin or something. And as he's, like, coming back, she's, like, sniff, like, hardcore smelling the food. She's like, oh, it smells so good. She, like, leans all the way in and goes, <laughs> gets a good old whiff in there. And I'm like, I'd be like, girl, get away from my food. Like, he didn't say shit about it. But I'd have been like, that wouldn't... I don't think I'm mad about it, but I'd have been like, what are you doing? This is weird that you're just all up in my food's grill. Like, I'm trying to eat. <laughs> can, can, can you not do that? <laughs> and then Ty is telling uh, Keith, we need to make a big move and put Austin up as, as the pawn. And I'm like, I, I know he's trying to target Austin, but like, that doesn't make any sense. When you're putting up someone as a pawn... That's not a big move. This should be a very straightforward move, a very safe move. I know pawns go home, but like the idea of a pawn is I'm playing it safe and putting this person up. I don't think people will vote out, right? 
That's not a big move. So he's like, make a big move and put up Austin. That means she would be the target. That doesn't make, that pitch makes no sense, Ty. That's not how the game works. That's not how it's structured that make a big move doesn't mean a pawn. Making a big move would be a backdoor option. So Keith, having some common sense, is like, you know, I'm not doing that. I'm not making a big move. I'm, 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 I'm but, he, but, he, but, he, but he tells Vic that Kyle and Rowe tossed her under. So now Vic's pissed at, at Kyle and Rowe. And she knows she needs to work with Kiefer. Uh, and she tells him, hey, Austin's coming for you. And he's like, I know. I, I, I know. Uh, and then he, he, tell, he basically, like, low-key tells Austin, like, hey, you're safe. And she's like, well, I'm not going up, right? And he's like, well, you're not going home. <laughs> Which is basically like, yeah, you're going on the block. But, like, don't worry about it, right? <laughs> uh, so Roe ends up using the veto on himself. And Austin goes on the block. And, again, I, I understand putting Austin up. It's just the Ty's pitch for it was shit. Uh... And also, she shouldn't be the target. Uh, Kyle should be the target. Very clear target. Because you know, of Kyle and Roe, Kyle should have been the target anyway. Because he's, he's, he's a better social player than Roe. So we go right into episode 11 here. Uh, Austin is miffed about her spot in the game. Uh, doesn't like to be on the block. But listen, Austin only talks to Bray and Kyle. Uh... That is n not good gameplay. The only reason she's made it this far is because there's other, like, people had other shots to take. But eventually they're going to run out of shots to take at other people and, and turn their sights on her and Brayden because they're always together, so split them up. And uh, she's the clear target of her and Brayden because Brayden at least talks to other people, has other conversations. But, like, if Brayden is evicted, Austin is, like, dead in the water. So, like, if I was in the house, I would be pushing for Bray to go. Because Austin is the, like, she, she's a lost puppy at that point. You take away her number one ally, she's done. She won't talk to anyone else. If Kyle goes this week and Bray goes the next week, Austin would be non-existent. We would forget she was there. And at the end, she wouldn't be able to communicate how well she did in the game because she wouldn't have done shit past that point. And she barely did anything before. So, you know, I, I, I am very disappointed in Austin's game. And I came close to picking her preseason. I'm glad I didn't do it. <laughs> Even though LT went out already, like, I at least had faith in her, if she stayed in, to make moves. With Austin, not only do I think she'll go home soon, but she hadn't done anything. She's just been very frustrating to watch. Uh, so Keith, Keith needs to stay on Kyle. You know, don't be contempt. Don't let people talk about taking Austin out. Shut that shit down. And be like, no. Talk. Jed. Beth. Listen. Kyle is coming for us. I know that you think you can work with Kyle. Austin is not the biggest threat. Kyle is the bigger threat. He needs to go. We'll worry about Austin later. You want Austin now? You take you win HOH next week? You take a shot at her. I'll vote her out. I have no problem with that. Kyle is my target. We're getting Kyle. Done. You know, conversation over. Uh, and, and Kyle again brings up the LT vote with Ro. And I'm like, leave the LT vote was against LT. We all know that. It also, like, you, you need to have a pitch that doesn't involve last week. Right now, you're going to go home this week, Kyle, unless you really do some work. And, you know, no one gives it. This is a very much, like, what can you do for me now kind of game. What happened a week or two ago doesn't fucking matter in the grand scheme of the game, right? Then was then. Now is now. How do we get to next week? Don't worry about what happened in week one, week two, week three, as far as, like, who voted who. It really doesn't matter. Let's worry about how we move forward. If we, if we can salvage a relationship, if we can really try to make something work, let's do it so that there is a next week and there is a week after. Uh, because week three doesn't fucking matter because that's already happened. Very frustrated with Kyle. And he tries to blow up Keith. Right, right after the the veto ceremony, but he is in like he's like Keith. You talk about being like he's he's, he's like revving up. 
to 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 and Keith's revving up to shut it down. And then immediately Vic's like, no, wait a minute, Kyle, you've been throwing my name under the bus. And then Kyle then turns and then tries to shut Vic down. He's like, no, you know, I'm, Vic, I'm not doing this. And I'm like, what do you mean you're not doing this? You were trying to do it to Keith. And now Vic, I mean, Vic, Vic is such great TV because she just comes out of fucking nowhere. Nothing she does makes any sense strategically. This didn't make any sense for her game, but she tried it with Beth. So she's like, fuck it. And we got to Kyle. It didn't work. He shut it down. But hey, if you're going to dish it, Kyle, you, you take it, you know? But I can only imagine Kyle. He's like, I'm going to blow up Keith at this veto. It's going to be great. And then, like, mid sentence, here comes Vic out of nowhere. He's probably like, what the fuck is this about? Great, great, great TV moment. Uh, and it's such an odd way to have it go down, too. Like, I've never seen that before. I've never seen someone trying to expose someone else, get interrupted, and someone come at them unrelated to the incident that they're trying to talk about. It's crazy stuff. This house is just so... I never know week to week. Like, even if I know who's HOH, I'm like, I don't really know who they're targeting. Because, like, there's a couple people I know that probably wouldn't, but then there's there's a gray area. People could just come, especially if, like, someone like a Vic or a Tara... Uh, you never fucking know who they're going to target. <laughs> you know, depending on which way the wind blows and what happens in the day, it could change. Uh, so, Keith's doing some work with Tina and Tara, trying to keep the pre 90 stuff solid. Uh, not enough work, especially with as, you know, unhinged as Tara can be. But, you know, he's at least putting in some conversation. You know, he's not completely just leaving it in the wind. Uh, so Vic tells Austin, you know, Kyle needs to go. Very awkward conversation, too, because, like, Austin's like, yep, I agree. Because, you know, you're not going to say I want to go home. And Vic's like, 100%. He's done. I got you. And she's like, okay. And then, like, it looks like Vic's about to, like, leave the room because the conversation is clearly, like, stopped. And then she, like, turns around and is like, me and you. And Austin's like, yep. And then there's, like, another pause. And she doesn't leave. And she keeps talking. I'm like, Vic, we get it. Point made. Why are you still standing here talking? Uh, she's so unpredictable, though. I love it. But also, like, I want her to do better. I want some of the shit she does to make sense. And it never does. But it does make for captivating television. Uh, so meanwhile, Vic goes and talks to Kyle and Roe. And like Kyle's, this is such a weird thing because Kyle's like, look, I'm sorry about, you know, throwing your name out there. Like, you know, I never meant, I'm not, you know, kind of like, apologize. I'm going home this week. It doesn't matter. And then Rose whispering, like, yeah, but like people are coming after you. And I would have taken a bullet for him. Uh, I would have taken two bullets for him. I'd take a bullet for you. But because he, he, cause he's going to be gone, I would take three bullets for you. It's me and you. I'm your number one. We're a duo now. Uh, you know, you can only trust me. Don't trust uh, Ted, uh, Ty, Ty and Jed. You can't trust them. They're untrustworthy. You need to trust me. Only me. Listen to my words. Me and you. And I'm like, it, it's like that scene in 21 Jump Street where he's like, where Channing Tatum's in his ear. And he's like, listen to his face. See my words. And he's like, what? Like, it, it's, it's a weird... Like, Kyle's doing the right thing, and, like, Roe is, like, hammering, hammering shit at the same time. Like, th these are two separate conversations you need to have with a gap. Kyle needs to come in, talk to Vic, apologize, clear the air, smash, squash that beef, let it settle, then Roe come in and, like, all right, I'm glad we had that conversation, but moving forward... You don't have that conversation with the other conversation in two different ears at the same time. That doesn't work. Like, that, you can't like, mend a fence and cross it. Like, you can't mend a bridge and cross it at the same time. You gotta let the, you know, the, the, the work you did dry, like, harden. You gotta let stuff settle and, and then use it. Uh, you can't, it, 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 it's like you did all that work for nothing, essentially. Uh, so Beth, Beth and Ty want Austin to go. Like they're 
really hammering for it. And again, I'm like, why? Why is that such a thing? It just doesn't make any sense to me why that is something they want so much, right? Uh, meanwhile, Tara and Tina, they get to like, there's a bit where they get to go in and like drink alcohol before the party starts. And we get this big party, the Vic living up to her name. She's dancing, twerking, splitting, all the business. Uh, everyone's having fun. At one point, Tara like stumbles into Tina's DR. Like, Tina's talking, like, oh, where is that? She's like, oh, come and sit down. I'm just coming in here. Just talking with you. Uh, Ty kisses Bray, and Beth goes, "Welcome to the club." And I'm like, "That is that is that is a good line. That is some funny stuff there." Uh, Austin also really falling for Kyle. Uh, I hope it lasts because clearly one of them's going home, and the other one could go go home very soon. Maybe we'll see a relationship potentially blossom. Maybe not. We'll see. Uh, neither Nam, though, really com campaigning. And Tara's mad about it. Because Tara wants to save Kyle. Uh, she really wants to save Kyle. To the point of, like, she's annoying everyone trying to save Kyle. Uh, people thought about taking out Austin. But because Tara was just so adamant, so crazy about keeping Kyle... They're like, well, I don't want to do it anymore. Like, Tara kind of ruined it. So, if she'd have just, like, laid low, if Tina could have reeled her in and just let this shit play out, we, we could have saw something else happen, right? Could have saw Austin go home, which would have been bad for Ty, Jen, and Beth, but because Tara played how she did, uh, that didn't happen. Uh, and she just really doesn't need to keep Kyle. Kyle's not great for her. I know she wants to keep the sides going at each other, but, like, you don't need to be the one captaining that move. You need to be the one who gets told about it and goes, oh, well, if, if, if that's what we're doing, then, you know, I'll, I'll do what, you know, everyone else is doing. You don't need to be the one going, like, we need to do this. Because, you're like, why does Tara want it so bad, right? So a very sloppy gameplay, as usual, from Tara. Uh, and Keith, like I said, Keith needs to fight harder. He needs to be like, no, no, we're not. Kyle is going home. Like, can't you guys see that he is a threat to you? Why are you so on, on Austin? Like, why is Austin the target? Uh, really should have, really should have fought for that harder. But nevertheless, it still goes his way. Uh, Tara tells Roe about the, the, why she wants Austin out, and he's like, "Well, yeah, of course I'm voting Austin out. If that happens, cool. But uh, I, I, you know, let me know how, how the work goes." I'm like, "No, bro, you need to be the one pushing this." And then Tara needs to suddenly be like, "Oh, okay, if that's what we're doing, then I'm doing it." Uh, Tara's need to be the one championing this move. You need to be, because really, it only benefits you and Kyle. So you need to, you know, you and Kyle need to be saying this. And Austin's not doing any work at all. She almost went home and is like, yeah, I'm in a good spot. And I'm like, you're on the block. That is the last spot you want to be in. And again, there's a flip potentially happening and you don't even know about it because you were so far up Braden's ass, you can't see what's going on in the game. And again, the only one, this is benefiting Braden because he's going to outlast you. And then once you're gone, no one's coming after Brad. Uh, then Kyle offers to take out Keith for Jed and Ty. It's his last ditch pitch. Not a great one. Uh, clearly, they're working with Keith. Like, you know, maybe you talk about that later, but you need to be like, look, I'll take out whoever you guys want next week. Like, you know, you're not touching the block. Ty's not touching the block. Beth not touching the block. Keith not touching the block. Uh, I, maybe I'll take out Tara. Who the fuck cares about Tara? <laughs> I know she's championing. Uh, you're staying in the game. But I'll take out Vic. Like, you know, you don't 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 push Keith, right? Keith walks down the convo too. It's real weird. I was right for the eviction. They show them some clips of like the fun moments in the house, and they're like, "And now for the eviction." 
and we get a seven to one vote. Only Roe votes out Austin. Everyone else evicts Kyle. Kyle is evicted. Roe is now so, so Roe. <laughs> well, the Roe show is going solo. Uh, and then we re are revealed that, because Kyle says nothing really of importance when talking to Arissa, uh, the HOH will be invisible this week. So they, we won't know who the, like, we will know, but the house guests won't know who the HOH is. They won't be in the HOH bedroom. There'll be no Wendy's, none of that this week. Um, they can play in the veto, and they can play in HOH next week. So this is the perfect time to win HOH. You're nominee. No one will know your HOH. And then you can win HOH again, and then act like that's your first HOH. Like, it's perfect. Great time to win HOH, right? Uh, you basically got County's Rocks, uh, Vito, or HOH, and we, you know, we're left there, uh, and if you don't want the spoiler on who won the HOH, go ahead, you know, like, subscribe, and the bell notification, jump out now. But if you do want to know, we're going to talk about it, and I'm going to speculate, uh, that, okay, you, uh, if you go ahead and jump out, and if you're still here, Victoria Spicy V is our first two-time head of household this season. At a great time for her. Uh, she could she could have used it the first time she was into it, but uh, it's an unpredictable week, an unpredictable power, and a, the, a very unpredictable age. Uh, hopefully, Vic, uh, the, the, the duo doesn't need to be broken up. If she wants to take a shot at Ty and Jed, great. She wants to get Beth out, cool. If she wants to break up Austin and Brayden, also cool. Tina and Tara, also cool. Like there are multiple duos she 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 could stand to break up. Like the, 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 the next couple of weeks are kind of straightforward. Once all the pairs are done, though, then we can kind of look at what's next, right? So I'm excited to see where she goes with the game moving forward. Uh, stay tuned. Uh, Tuesday, we'll be talking about uh, the podcast we released, talking about the Monday episode, tonight's episode, technically. Uh, also, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell notification. Uh, we'll talk about more spoilers, like feed stuff uh, tonight on or on tomorrow's episode. Good Lord, I'm getting so mixed up. Tomorrow's episode, we can talk about more uh, feed stuff, talk about who's on the blog, maybe the veto is used, all that business, and kind of talk about how the week might play out. Also, don't forget to check out the other podcasts I've been working on, other things coming up. Like I said, Challenge All-Stars, April 1st. Going to be covering that as well uh, because I am a glutton for punishment. So, you know, here we go. Also, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification. And most importantly, guys, stay safe and stay nerdy. Until next time.